But Nathan was patient. Hey, that rogue on the white kid. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, bitch, I'm in the league. You a fan of a team. Okay. And while you hate, I be hunting for the green. Uh -huh. You just chase your screen. Yeah, you go chase a meme. What? More space for me yeah. in the still of all you please. <laughs> I'ma blow the scene, new diamonds on my teeth Got the pearlies up on me, join us in your Hello friendly listener, you are now tuned in to the Rambling Rogue Show I am your host, Rambling Rogue, aka Gyres Rogue Aka Gyres in the Jungle on YouTube And uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in We are now on what episode? What episode are we on? Hold on It's a pretty good Sunday of the 15th and we are now on episode let me check the soundcloud man let me check the, are we on episode 15 it, it looks like we on episode 15 man hey man one time for you the listener quick round of applause for you episode 15 would not have been possible without y'all you know what i'm saying um of course you guys aren't really integral into what i do much but I'll tell you this, if all my view, my videos had gotten just zero views, like literally zero, I probably would have stopped at like episode two. So the fact that they even get like five, ten, or whatever they get, it's all for you. I'm doing it for y'all. Um, and, and thank you. You know what I'm saying? You guys didn't have to watch any of what I've been putting out. You know, Lord knows I, I a lot of times don't even want to watch some of the stuff that I put out, but you guys do. You guys have still taken in that content. So, there's another round of applause for yourself. Round of applause for yourself. Hey, man. Uh, <laughs> it's a pretty, like I said, pretty good day this Sunday. Um, before I even get into any topics that I've written down, my week, my week was good. You know, I'm, I am recording this on the day that you guys will be hearing this. And uh, that's Sunday. So, I'll give you guys a quick little rundown of my week. It's been a pretty average week, about 16 hours at work. Not much. If you follow the Dreadlock Journey vlog, you'll see that, you know, I'm stoned during most of that anyway. So it's like, yeah, work was fine. I ended up, you know what I'm saying, doing a shift with my mom's store because she actually runs a store. And I don't think I've, have I talked about that much on the podcast? Well, just a quick little summary. My mom... She's of African, you know, descent, whatever. She is African. Both my parents are. They uh, came from Sierra Leone, this small country in the western part of Africa. It's like near Nigeria. It's a very small country. And, um, you know, from there, she has taken my mom. She has taken her expertise in, in cuisine. And she's taken her expertise in, in just the West African, you know, like, just, I guess, foods and you know different like traditions and things like that and she's made her own shop called the we own african market and it's actually you know it's actually it's actually been running since i've since i was like a kid so i did a shift at the shop you know and um you know those shifts there are probably like five five six hours so you know it was it was a little bit longer than i usually work you know and to be honest, the reason why I don't work there anymore, like every day is just because, and I'll probably explain this in the future, but it's just because, um, you know, I had gotten a lot of anxiety from working there. It's a very anxious place at times, but, um, for the most part, no, no. Yeah. The store, if you're ever looking for any African produce, we own African market, any African ingredients, any African, you know, ideas on cooking, any anything really African related, even into clothing. And she used to do movies, but I think we still have some. We on African market in Rialto, California. Anyway, <laughs> um, besides that, I've been grinding real hard, trying to get this mixtape, the Linda EP finished and done. Um, Nobody ever really told me how hard it'd be to, to actually put together a, a project that I actually have, like, faith in. Hold on. You guys can't hear it, but my cat is calling from outside. Hold on. And we're back. Anyway, 
Yeah, no, like I said, nobody was telling me how hard it'd be to put this thing together. But man, I got to say, because I don't think I say this enough. I am actually having a great damn time when I'm working on music. Like, putting my all into it and then just seeing how it comes out. Because usually what will happen is, is I'll have an idea for a song. And I'll, it, I'll literally hear how it sounds in my head. And then I'll put, you know, my ideas down, write it, record it. And then I'll put my effects on it. And you know what will often happen? I'll literally hear it exactly how I heard it in my head. And then once I get that down, like, and record it, I'll be like, damn, I want to change this now. And I want to change this. So it's like, it just never ends in changing what I want it to be, the mixtape. You know, and um, while that can be sometimes, sometimes kind of, like, confusing and sometimes kind of, like, uh, I guess, like, not misleading, but like um, time wasting. Because, you know, you don't want to constantly be changing it. You want to really go for something solid and just kind of flesh it out. But I'm having a fun time just going through all my different pro thought processes and, and selecting which one I really like. You know what I mean? And, and I've had a fun time also just kind of eliminating some of the, just the weirder ideas and some of the just nonsense that you know, nobody was telling me that, you know, is, is not cool or is not wanted on there. Like I was, I was really planning on doing this idea where I had broken down the five tracks of the tape into uh, single letters. And then, you know, basically the first track would be called L and then the next track would be called I. And then the next track is called N, then D, then A, right? And then each track, not only are they separated by letters, the track names, but you know, of course, with each letter, the the track itself would, you know, resonate and would uh, 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 reflect some sort of word that starts with that letter. So, I don't know, love would be for like the first one, right? And it fit because the first track was, it, it is a love song. But as I started to write the tape and as I started to progress into it, this thought process just didn't, it didn't make sense. And the songs I ended up making just didn't fit into that idea. Um, but that's just how it happens, you know? And I ended up with a new structure for the mixtape. Just how it happens. Um, as far as the cover for it, though, the cover is going to be pretty exciting. Uh, I take from Ty the Creator here quite a lot when it comes to, like, doing these covers. I, I really do want to try and make something that's so me- so eye-catching, but again, it's so, so, uh, I don't want to say unique or original, but it's so me. It's so personal to me. But yet, at the same time, I want it to be something that when, you know, when you look at the things on the screen, you know exactly what's happening there. You know exactly what's going on. But once you get into the small details and the intricacies and things like that, you look a little bit harder. You'll start to notice some, you know, it's just some quirks and some things that I added in. And that's just for the cover. So... Yeah, Linda EP, it's coming soon. Um, if you're a beat maker or if you're a person that wants to start making beats, making music in that way, um, I want to encourage you to really go after that because I, because if you're like kind of thinking about it, and if you kind of want to make music or something, or if you just like you're in the, in between on it, you know, you really should because I. I got to say this, I shot myself in the foot years ago, you know, when I did not because I had time, listener, I had time, my life, uh, I've had time, I've, I've had, I've been fortunate enough to be, to have been given lots of time to reflect on myself and the things I do, and when I say I have time, I mean, like, I've had a lot of experiences and I've been in a lot of situations where hey I'm not doing much and I and and I and I noticed that and I'm cognizant of it yet what I didn't do with my time like I really feel like I should have years prior to now I'm only 19 but I feel like I really should have learned how to properly make music and I feel like I should have also learned how to properly articulate my ideas. I'm coming to learn these things now and I'm coming to to you know fit them into my arsenal so that I'm putting out more content for you. But had I focused more at like a uh, like just a slightly younger age, even like 16, 15, you know, 
on simple things like how does this program work fl studio how does this program work with youtube and in conjunction to video editing davinci resolve how does you know all these different things like youtubers that i watch every day how do they do what they do you know i never asked myself these questions until now until wanting to get into this space and if you're listening to me right now and if you're kind of like on the fence about content creating or if you just feel like maybe you're not good enough at anything to do anything it's nonsense man you could really you could really make so much out of so little and perfect example out of that i'm rambling to you right now these are just thoughts that i've had stored inside of my mind all week so well not all week actually since wednesday because we did have our early episode of the rambling rogue show showing off the stream but i've had ooh, focus i've had these thoughts gathered up inside of me for some time and that's because hey you know i'm that kind of person but i recognize too that even if you're not that kind of person that has thoughts bubbling up inside every one of us is powerful enough to still put out content that's worthy that's etc even if you're not bubbled up inside like me you could you could do it too so i don't know i'm noticing now that with making music that i should have done things before so if you're on the fence about it jump in just do it nike <laughs> um and to and to further this point so as the day the day of recording this is sunday yesterday i was doing some grocery shopping doing as i do i actually um and the sidebar from this going out now i've started to to kind of revamp myself in high school i would really not care about how i looked when i you know went outside and did things when i would meet other people when i would interact even going, going to the grocery store i just wouldn't care about how i presented myself wearing mismatched socks you know i mean i still do that today but mismatched socks you know just dirty clothes sometimes you know just pulling stuff straight out of the uh, uh you know the uh the bin not not out of the trash bin of course but out of the uh dirty clothes bin and i would just throw it on and i would just go but coming into being an adult and coming into kind of noticing that it's probably a more shit experience if you hermit yourself and keep yourself inside your head and if you make yourself, or at least if you don't care, it's kind of a worse experience than when you do care. And the way I describe that is, is man, I'll, I go to the grocery store now and I actually take showers before just going to the store, or going out to do things. I, you know, like, of course, I used to take showers every day, right? But I'm not going to lie. I used to skip days like, you know, before, like, especially in at my high school age, I used to. I used to I used to bum it. I used to bum it a lot. That's what I used to call it, you know, bumming it. And I mean, I don't know. I, I don't want to judge anybody that's doing that now. But I just feel like for me personally, it was just a more let me say that, yeah. For me personally, it was just a more shit experience going out and living the world like that. But you know, I go out to the grocery store, I'm shopping, you know, I'm fitted. Or whatever i got my little headband i got my little nautica shirt i've got my little denim denim jacket got my little denim jeans or whatever i'm matching and i'm popping or whatever i i you know i'm fitted and uh i spot a guy who is actually you know locally known for also being fitted but not just being fitted but just for being an artist for being a person like me who wants to get out their ideas who wants to get out their content who wants to get out of this general small town area that we preside in his name is wet paint larry you can find him on instagram you can find him i think he might have a twitter and like i said he's a local street artist who back in the day when i was in school people would call him corny you know they call him corny because his style right was a little eh, it, was, it was it was it was it was a little geared towards the kids it was a little you know i mean his style was filled with pizza so what he would do is is a lot of his is he draw pizzas everywhere he would draw um really crude looking very uh uh i don't even know how, what i would liken it to but just very crude um drawings that were you know animated not realistic 
at all. A very graffiti. They, he, he had this very graffiti-esque style too, where he would mix into it, but he would do re like re renditions of art that we already know. So he he liked to do uh you know a painting about fairly odd parents, and then it'll be like you know Cosmo and Wanda with like you know crazy X'd out eyes or something, or or you know just like a slightly different you know like setup and look is very animated he has his own style when you see it wet paint larry wet paint larry when you see it you won't be able to unsee it but that was about i don't know what 2016 and i also i used to always tell people that called his stuff corny i said you know you guys think he's corny now you think that now but once he starts getting a good look outside of this city outside of our surroundings People will turn around and they'll start to see him as the guy who's a trendsetter, as a, you know, forward thinker, innovator, etc., etc., influencer, etc. And I was, you know, like I said, grocery shopping and I spotted him outside. So I decided to go say what's up to him. And the reason why I did was because I was right, man. The guy, like I said, back in 2016 and even before then, he was doing that. You know, that, that, that kitty style where, again, it was friendly. And not only is it friendly for the kids, but it was friendly for the city. I mean, he was, he's supposed to be, I mean, he understands the brand that he wants to put out and he, and he applies to it. He's supposed to be a kind of figure that while an artist, you know, because that can be, can hold a lot of negative connotations. The artist, while he's an artist, he's clean, he's, uh, marketable and, he's he's connected you know he's a community guy he's a, he's a guy who's who, you know is a face around you know so he understood that and he applied for it and i told people i said you know once he shakes this off because really to be honest in things what you need to do is first take over your city you need to take over your general area however you find that you can do that as a rapper as an artist as a you know influencer creator etc whatever if you can take over your general surroundings first, it'll be so much easier because that's your foundation. And from that, you can stand and broadcast to the world. You look at any made artist right now that you that you enjoy. They probably were, were praised and loved in their city, in their general confines, their county, etc., whatever, first. And they cultivated that, most importantly, first. Then they branched out. And I think wet paint is no different, man. Wet Paint is now painting for the likes of Jamie Foxx. He's got a picture on his Instagram that I saw a few weeks back. This is why I was really so eager to go see him and talk to him when I saw him at the grocery store. I, you know, he he's literally standing next to the Jamie Foxx, and Jamie's holding up one of his paintings. Now, what no pizza shit on there? What no, what none of that? No, it was serious. It was serious. It was an actual, you know portrait of jamie i'm not sure what he's wearing but it's you know it's, it looks nice and there's wet paint standing right next to him and the way he got it to him so i asked him about that when i saw him the way he even got that painting into the hands of jamie fox dude just had tenacity dude just had determination dude said because jamie i guess put out a flyer for a party in hollywood for us uh small town california people hollywood from my town is only about what 50 minutes away hour at the most if the 10 is crazy what's that that's nothing i mean it's really it's really nothing and you do drive everywhere anyway so f it why not let's go and so we did made it to the bash was in the public you know area where lots of fans and people were and the thing that made him stand out that got him to be in the same room as jamie fox and i'm sure i'm not telling this whole story it would be great if Wet Paint Larry could tell the whole story. I might have him on the podcast at some point. Who knows? But the way that he got picked and, and was able to come out was he used his talent. The thing that makes him him, not unique or anything like that, or it's, but what makes him him, that's what got him there. They saw the painting, picked him out from the crowd, and there he goes. He's talking to, to Jamie Foxx. He's in a picture with him. He's giving him his painting, which may or may not be um, hung up somewhere. But the fact is, is that he still talked to him. That's what he wanted. And I think I asked him too. I think he maintains a line of communication with Fox. 
And not just him. There's an upcoming rapper named Mozzie. Other upcoming rappers. If you go down his page, it's looking like that's what he's starting to try to do now. Making things for people that are already established. And you know, he probably had this idea before when he was doing the pizza art and when he was doing the local stuff. But you know what? You can't just go out and just become that guy who, who every my glasses fell off. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. You can't just be that guy that, that uh, you know, is established and everybody knows. No, you have to build first. And if it's corny, you're doing the right thing. If you start off and the people closest around you and people around you are saying that what you're doing is corny, it's because they don't understand. Period. And obviously, this is the exact same kind of thing. So to Wet Paint Larry, man, huge round of applause for you. To be honest, you're an inspiration of mine, and I see you as the kind of person that, um, you know, as a creator, we all should aspire to want to be like. It's just because it's like, again, that tenacity, that 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 drive to say, forget how I look, forget what this makes me what make what this makes people think about me i gotta do this right now because i feel it i feel it that passion so you know wet paint larry y'all toe take over um seriously though that guy you know he i want to say he deserves more recognition but to say that would be failing to realize how this is and you realize that people like that, they're going to get the recognition. When you realize that, that the only thing that's, it's not, there's nothing stopping it, but that the only thing there is, is time and how long it takes for him to get it. You're like, you smile because then you're like, okay, I know at some point he's going to get it. And he's starting to get that recognition now. It's only 2018. You know what I'm saying? And homie has been grinding his ass off. So, yeah, no, shout out to that man. Big shout out to that man. Yesterday, uh, I also went to a, uh, well, let me, actually, before I even get to that next story, next big rant, my glasses are breaking. Listeners on SoundCloud, you won't be able to see this, but I am looking like a turbo nerd right now. Like, seriously, <laughs> I am looking like the biggest dweeb ever to ever walk the face of the earth. I literally have electrical tape. Let me show this to the camera here. Electrical tape on my glasses, holding up one of the uh, arms. I don't know what you would call these, arms? I think I think a homie of mine was calling them arms. I think I asked a homie of mine of that. But uh, look at that. So these things are falling off my face all day. And you may be asking, why don't you go get new glasses? Well, I procrastinate. <laughs> I procrastinate so much, listener. And I do not spend my money, much of it at least, on, uh, you know, like food or anything like that. I buy groceries for the week for, for a couple weeks at a time. And then I mainly live off of that and anything else that, you know, I still live with my mom. So, <sighs> excuse me. Anything else that she would make for us. But. The rest of my money? Sheesh, man. It goes towards, if I could actually just pan the camera here, goes towards this entire setup that I've created for, uh, you know, content. And this isn't even the whole entire thing. What you're seeing here, right? We've got, and the, the keyboard here isn't included, but we've got the mic, we've got the monitor, we've got, I don't know if you can see them, the headphones right there. We've got so much. And we're still building brick by brick because, you know, you need so much. And we're doing it alone. And we're also, you know what I'm saying, trying to do it without losing our sanity. So we buy what we need for the setup and it's expensive. Okay, so that is why I haven't gotten new glasses. Uh, they're cheap as hell. I get Walmart glasses. Too, so I, I know I should do it. I'm gonna do it, but <laughs> tape for right now. And I'm actually even thinking about busting out the Gorilla Glue real fast. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yesterday, um, 
I just want to talk about this really fast. I'm probably going to be bringing this place up a lot more in the future. So get ready. The San Bernardino Garcia Center for the Arts. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful place. Okay. Uh, for any local people that are, that are artists, that are inquisitive, that are interested, whatever the case may be, the San Bernardino Garcia Center for the Arts is a resource for you. Okay. So I ended up taking a damn near like two hour break because just as I was doing the podcast, uh, just as I'm doing it, I'm in the middle of it. What you call it? Um, got a snap from somebody just as I'm doing it. My whole family just, well, my brother and my mom, they just wake up, you know, and they get up and because I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a early riser. So, uh, you know, like they both wake up and basically they're just like, you know, all around and buzzing around and getting ready and trying to get out and shuffle out and whatnot. So, had to definitely stop doing the show for just a second. But um, yeah, the Garcia Center for the Arts. It's a great place. You know, you walk in and you're greeted. My glasses are off again. You're greeted to... Yeah! Yeah! Excuse me. You're greeted to this wonderful selection of just like roses and just like other flowers. I don't know if they're roses, just like a whole bunch of flowers and whatnot. It's just like this nice fountain, you know, it's this very serene, very, um, artesian, very like, I don't know, just welcoming area that just feels like growth should be done there. Like it feels like, uh, like, I guess how you would imagine a college campus is supposed to feel in that it's inviting and maybe without the prestige though, like without like all the prestige and like the high classiness of it, but like, you know, like the learning part of it and like the feeling of, you know, it just, the grounds itself on the Garcia center, they just, it feels like you should go there with inquisitiveness, with an open mind, with, yeah. So, uh, I went there and there was a poetry reading. There were a couple artists or uh, artists. I'm so used to saying artists. There was a couple art authors that write poetry there. They actually have published works and I only got the, uh, name of one of them, but I was listening to so much poetry and I was listening to these people's stories and whatnot. These were older people, you know, maybe like in their, you know, thirties to forties or whatever. Not many people my age, unfortunately. I was hoping that there might have been, but hey, it happens. You know, and I still take the situation for what it was. People were reading some very heartfelt things and um, you know, it just it just it gives you that pause when you hear something, especially when somebody's recounting something like <laughs> traumatic. And, you know, it just gives you that sometimes uneasy feeling, you know, like you don't know how quite to react because it's so real to them, but it's not quite a reality to you. But no, yeah, it was just, it was a night of a. Uh, decent poetry I got out got to see some of uh some of what it looks like when you have passion in your in your writing so I've seen what it looks like when you have passion in 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 visual art right I've seen the visual artist at herstory these women you know totally full of passion each one of them you know like just so many directions of art so many different avenues so many lanes so much passion so much dedication to it 
And I'm now seeing that with poets. And the way they differ, I mean, yeah, maybe the poets were a little older, but man, they're much more, you know, sad, stoic, fucking just, their work anyway is so serious. But the people themselves, you know, they're, they're happy-go-lucky. Well, not happy-go-lucky, but they're like, they, they have good attitudes and, and demeanors and things like that. But the shit that, that, that they were describing, these poets, you know, they, I think I actually have the name of one of them. Let me actually get her card. Give me a second. by the name of Miss Nakia Cheney. She's with the Inlandia Literary Literary See, I can't even say these words, man. Going so over my head. Inlandia Institute. So, she read for us some passages inside of her book that she's actually published and like I said, these are published art uh, authors. You know, and um again, That bold truth telling that they exhibit is is it gives you pause, you know. So no, let me show the card here. I also wanted to say, well, let me let me just show it here. Hold on. Is that focused? So, uh, what else did I want to say? Crush Chronicles. It's Sunday, recording this, right? So, Friday and Saturday, I did go see my crush. On Friday, you know, I was there for about an hour-ish. Had to cut it short, though. I really was going just to test the waters to kind of see because she sent me kind of a, you know, killing, you know, like a heart-blowing. Not really heart-blowing. But, like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, just a really uh, powerful message. Uh, She said she's just not interested. So I was like, all right, let me pop up, see how she's feeling. And um, in fact, I had even saw her on the Thursday night because she was also in then too. And I went in just to go return a movie because my brother had actually got one movie from the store and he had actually returned it. Or he needed to return it. So I would, you know, return it for him. And I wasn't in there for much, you know, for very long. But I saw her or whatever. Talked, kicked it. For like, maybe, literally like a minute or two. And then just walked out. Because like, I was literally, did I didn't have nothing else to do. So, come back Friday. And on Friday, I come in. And yeah, you know, we, we, we get to talking a little bit about this book that she recommended me and get to talking a little bit about the week and everything. And I'm trying to suss out, okay, does she really have no interest and whatnot? But I don't know, man. Conversations seem the same, but yeah, it seems like she's trying to admit that. So I'm like, okay, I got to, I got to get a, a, a definite, you know what I'm saying? Like, no from this. So uh, I rent a movie by getting her a Coke, you know, or a little even exchange. It's like a dollar for the Coke and the movie rental is usually like a couple bucks. So I'm saving a dollar ish and getting her something right. Rent a movie. I get Blade Runner 2049 or whatever the hell it's called. Then I realize that I haven't seen Blade Runner and that I have to get the original Blade Runner. So I got that too. Uh, 
but that that's later. Anyway, get the movie, leave, come back on Saturday, and by Saturday, I thought up of something to take her to, right? So I'm going to come in with Saturday with a request. If she says no to that, then, you know what I'm saying? Chill out with it. So, of course, the poetry thing was supposed to be what I invited her to, right? And I did. And, of course, she, you know, immediately said no. Gotten that before. Okay. But uh, it was interesting this time, though. Because this time, she said, nah, I don't want to go. And I said, oh, okay, so you you busy. Yeah, okay. Like usual. And she said, nah, I'm going to just go home and go to sleep. Yeah. So I had to stand there with my uh, dignity, chipping, endlessly scaling just right off my skin. But, uh, yeah, you know, I ended up sending her the link to the uh, thing. And, you know, put a little corny message like, hey, if you change your mind, just just, just come on by. She didn't. And it's Sunday now. And uh, I don't think I'm going to see her. <laughs> but, hey, man. I had to get that definite no. So, it is what it is. Okay? I mean, it happens. It does hurt. It hurts like 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 right here. Like it's just you know it's just like a, it's like a weight. And then of course when I went to the poetry shit, I was hoping to see you know some young people. But hey man, the Garcia Center it's not it's not reaching as many people as it should be. That's why I'm talking about it here. Hopefully you know people gain some kind of like just gumption to go out and experience some new shit because it's literally a free center. For the arts. So many people are interested. So many people want to do it. That's a place that could help you. They carry out workshops. They do all sorts of stuff. We've been rambling for a minute on this one. <sighs> what else do I want to say? It's uh, pretty much it, you know. Oh, yeah. Let me let you guys know what I've got coming up. If you are a watcher of Dreadlock Journey, my vlog on YouTube, Dreadlock Journey. Uh, what is that? What, 25? Finna come out? Some shit? I don't know. I don't know what Dreadlock Journey we on. But Dreadlock Journey finna come out. And this week is going to be pretty exciting. This week and next week is going to be pretty exciting. So we have, of course... The Asian Dad interview that's coming up on 420. Now, I'm putting that out into this world through the podcast. This is the first time I'm ever promoting it. But Asian Dad is, I would call him an, an influencer at a baby stage, right? Like, he, he, could be, he could be the next, I don't even know. He could be just something, I feel like. Because of his personality and the way that, like, even just early on, he just always been a, been able to kind of lead people. And not lead them, but, like, just have people follow him. You know, he's just always been that guy. But, um, and I feel like in this kind of world, he could profit off of his personality and off of his, just his life. Um, and he's tried to as well, you know, like, he's done so much. So, we're going out to L.A. on 420. Don't know what we're going to see. Um, but yeah, it should be an exciting time. Should be, it should be, it should be an interesting time. And then <laughs> on that Saturday, right after 420, my brother Nigel actually got a ticket, a VIP ticket to the Cannabis Cup. So... Uh, 
with him having that, that basically means I'm a go. So I, I don't know. I went to the Cannabis Cup last year out here in San Bernardino. If you don't know what the Cannabis Cup is, the Cannabis Cup is this just amazing event where vendors that sell marijuana, cannabis products, concentrates, accessories, just everything, just come together along with musicians and entertainment of other different sorts and shit, and they just all party inside of like, you know, this big ass, you know, of course, event center, place, whatever. So out here, when it happens, last year when it happened, I, I was able to actually take part in it all three days last year or two days or whatever it was, getting just absolutely just, just, just faced the whole entire time. I mean, think of it like this. If you're a pothead and you're interested, I carried a, a bong, a small bong that's like handheld that you could, um, like a bubbly really, but it's like rubber. I still have it somewhere around here. Uh, maybe I might get it, but kind of picture a, a, a rig like this, right? And then there's like a bowl piece for weed. And the whole time, you're just going to booth, 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 with your bowl open and ready to be filled with free gas. Like, and, and it's gas. Like, and, and it's not just like sample shit. It's fucking gas. Like, it's always gas and it's not even just gas it's literally wax moon rock weed some hash somebody will throw so it's literally i would just go to table to table just filling up my bowl smoking more along the way talking to people seeing shit it was just a, it was just a very interesting time i was just you know i i just had my eyes open and i was just experiencing a lot can't remember much of it <laughs> but that shit is it's quite an experience. Um, but um, so he's got a, a ticket, my brother. I'm on the fence about it because my recommendation that allows me to smoke in the state of California actually did expire. Putting that out there, I don't give a fuck. Um, I burnt it up the other day. So that's gonna be in dreadlock journey. But um Yeah, man. With that shit being expired, I got to pay for it. And people are charging some crazy ass amounts. I remember I remember at the uh, Cannabis Cup last year, they actually had recommendations for sale. But I'm not sure if they had that. I don't know, man. But, uh, and like, I would have to buy a ticket just so I could get a wreck. Like, that's already so much money. And then I would have to go in. And here's the other thing about the Cannabis Cup. Like I said, it's vendors there so you really should go to buy but you know my cheap ass last year being 18 and a dickhead you know i was just going and taking free shit i'm well, I mean, not a dickhead i've already paid for the ticket but you know people would they, they urge you to buy so but yeah man you know i'm on the fence about it i may go probably i will go i don't know after that though we have the smokers club on the 29th. Um, so I've got the VIP ticket for that shit. It's going to be in Long Beach. And the lineup for it, man. I mean, there's a few names on there that are just fucking spectacular. That just made me buy the ticket off rip. Like a few bucket list people that I just had to get off the list. Like like I have to see these people. Like Mac Miller, Cuddy, Earl. Off rip, I already had to see just those people. Anybody else that was on there is just you're just it's just extras. No Zan happens to be on the set list too. I think I'll be skipping that show. I think I'll be skipping that show. Not because I particularly don't like Lil Zan or dislike him or anything like that. I just never listen to his music. I never listen to the music. I probably just listen to the single. I know people are saying that his album is trash now. I mean, I don't know what y'all expected. I, like seriously no no really actually seriously what did you expect out of Lozanne's album like what did you expect out of a body of work from Lozanne and not saying anything about Lozanne it's just literally what did you expect and when you come to the realization that you expected nothing then I mean 
anything that he gives you is higher than your expectation is is what i'm thinking so it's just like i don't know because your expectation is nothing but <laughs> um shout out to lil xan i.e i.e natives man toe take over we talked about a lot in this podcast uh hey man i just like venting on this podcast this is the rambling rogue show i am your host and uh you know i'm just rambling to you guys just i appreciate you guys just sitting here listening to me if you've listened this far thank you if you've been watching my face thank you um i'm a streamer now i stream live but you know it's honestly i'm still configuring it but uh, I think I've gotten it to the point where I think I know exactly the setup that I want to use with my stream. It's going to be a little rudimentary. It's not going to be, you know, as beefed up and as cool as like other guys, but it's it's going to be enough. You know, it's going to be enough. And, um, well, yeah. Uh, Linda EP, I think I've already talked about it, but... I made a pact and a vow within myself. I don't know if I said it on a podcast, but I'm going to say it right now on the podcast. I will learn FL Studio 10. I I will learn it enough to be able to make what I am thinking, the rhythms that I am feeling, come out and onto a beat. Now, will I be a master of it? Who knows? Will I... Will I... You know, begin to be able to just make beats off the fly very quickly. Who knows? But I will be able to at least think something, a rhythm, a pattern, a sample that goes with it and make it. Because I can't tell you, listener, I think like that so much. And I wish that I I had this kind of like. Dr. Dre Snoop type of thing where I just had somebody that was just there and, and you know, but, and of course, Dre just wasn't just there for Snoop, but you wish you had it like that. Anything else I got to say? No. Thanks for listening to me ramble. This one's coming out on time. Sorry for last week's blunder again. I was so overwhelmed. And, uh, yeah, it's ramble time.